So guys, if you can, please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video and please share this with everyone. So guys, this next news story is coming from Manchester Ways. And a drug dealer opened fire at a home and a taxi base to send a powerful message. These gangland shootings happened in Salford and Bury within months of each other with the same gunman pulling the trigger. The drug dealer Aaron Gray fired at a taxi rank in Salford where a woman was working on a Sunday evening. A few months later, he shot at a house in Bury through a living room window. No one was hurt in either shooting, but the woman at the taxi rank has been left traumatised. She shouted, he's got a fucking gun, after she had walked to the door to investigate after hearing banging. The occupiers of the house in Bury were upstairs at the time and the Crown Court in Manchester heard that the shootings were ordered by others. The judge, Nicholas Dean KC, said of the taxi rank incident it could have easily struck an individual. He said, of the house shooting which happened in the early hours, that was no guarantee that there was not someone who could have been hit, a high risk of death or severe physical harm must arise. The judge added someone has been sent a powerful message, but in sending it those who are responsible for it are endangering lives. The prosecutors told our woman who's working at Swan Taxis in Eccles at around 10 o'clock and after hearing some banging at the door, she went out to investigate and saw a man armed with the gun. He fired and in her terror, she fell backwards. However, she was not hit by the bullet. Gray rushed to a getaway car which contained another man, Dominic Hughes. As the men fled, the driver of the car was involved in a serious head-on collision with a taxi driver which left him hospitalised. As they escaped on foot, the gun a Glock 17 was dumped in a wheelie bin. Police later recovered the gun as well as a balaclava, which contained Gray's DNA. Dominic Hughes left an Encro form behind in the getaway car as the pair ran following the crash and Gray and Hughes were found guilty of possessing a firearm with intent to endanger life. A couple of months later, Gray opened fire into a living room, as I said in Bury, and a gunshot was heard at around 1.30 in the morning. The residents who lived there only realised what had happened the following morning. An ex-boyfriend of a resident who lived at the property had been arrested earlier in connection with drugs and firearms offences the court had heard. The gun used during the shooting in Whitefield was recovered two months later wrapped in a sock and housed in an Asda carrier bag at the home of a 30-year-old Ian Warmby in Radcliffe in Bury. The prosecutor said the firearm was a gun for hire which was controlled by an associate. Hughes was the custodian of the weapon. Warmby was the runner to fetch the gun when required and Grey was the man tasked with pulling the trigger. Encrochat messages uncovered following the law enforcement hack of the system also revealed a plot by another man, a 22-year-old Jacob Smith, to get hold of a firearm found at Warmby's home. Smith wanted to avenge an attack on a family friend of his, it was said, and on the encrypted network, Smith asked another man, a 40-year-old Craig Walker, if he could get the thing. Warmby was then contacted with a view to arrange the use of the Glock for a quartered price of £6,000. The handover never took place because police seized the firearm. In a message sent prior to the raid at Warmby's home, Smith told Walker he would go over and just fill him in with lead. They only got three men with their thing, I'll reload. But the judge said his message was likely to be an exaggeration. Gray Hughes Warmby also pleaded guilty to drugs offences. So Gray was sentenced to 14 years in prison. Hughes, he was jailed for 18 years. Smith was sentenced to six and a half years, whilst Walker received a six-year sentence. They would all serve two-thirds of their sentences in prison before being released. Warmby was jailed for three years. New story coming in from Midland Staffordshire Ways, and a 19-year-old who stabbed a young dad to death at a house party has been convicted of murder. Chardon Karnaji knifed Oliver Freckleton to his leg when the victim tried to break up a fight involving his friend. The wound cut two major blood vessels and he died in the driveway as he battled to protect his friend during the early hours of the morning. Chardon now faces life behind bars for murdering Mr Freckleton, who died the day before his 20th birthday. Kate Seal, the specialist prosecutor for the Crown Prosecution Service, said this is another senseless loss of young life to knife crime and I welcome the jury's verdicts of guilty. Oliver Freckleton should have been safe at his friend's party and because of the defendant's actions, his life was tragically cut short as he selflessly tried to protect his friend. I hope the verdicts serve 
as a warning to anyone who believes it is acceptable to carry knives or weapons. Oliver's family are devastated at the loss and my thoughts remain with them and his young daughter will grow up without a father. So Chardon from Derby was convicted of murder and the verdicts came following a two-month trial at Stafford Crown Court. Mikhail Paddyfoot of Derby and a 17-year-old girl were convicted of manslaughter. A fourth defendant, a 21-year-old, Travel Reed of Derby admitted manslaughter at the end of the trial and all defendants will be sentenced at Stafford Crown Court on a date which is yet to be fixed. The court heard how Mr Freckleton went to a friend's 17th birthday party in Burton-on-Trent in December 10th, 2021. The 17-year-old girl invited her boyfriend and his friend to the party for the sole purpose of attacking her ex-partner who was friends with the victim. She had been unhappy her ex-partner was at the party, the CPS said. The defendants disguised themselves in masks and balaclavas before taking with them weapons, including knives. A fight between the defendants and another of Mr Freckleton's friends started outside the house. The victim stepped in and was stabbed in the leg. He died in the driveway at the house party protecting his friend while the defendants drove away in three cars. Evidence from witnesses revealed the 17-year-old girl knew one of the gang members carried a knife. The victim's blood was found on a foot mat in the rear of one of the getaway cars while a pair of shorts stained with his blood were recovered from Chardon. The defendant had attempted to evade justice by asking his dad to wash his belt and jeans. A blood-stained dress was also found at the girl's home. An investigation later found that the defendants had planned their attack agreeing to take weapons during a conversation over Snapchat. Detective Inspector Adrian Webb from Staffordshire Police's major investigation department said this was a cowardly and senseless attack it claimed the life of a much-loved young father, partner, son and friend. Oliver's murder continues to devastate his family and I express my deepest condolences to them. While only Chardon actually inflicted the fatal wound, those found guilty were there to encourage or help in their violence. They would have realised the risk of some harm. Some covered their faces and at least one carried a knife and another actually had a gun. Oliver was stabbed and another guest received slash wounds only minutes after they arrived. None of the suspects attempted to help or seek help for Oliver who was left bleeding to death instead. They all got in their cars and got away. Oliver was murdered a day before his 20th birthday and his young daughter will now have to grow up without him. It is tragic and again highlights the devastating consequences of carrying knives. Carrying a knife too often results in death, families destroyed in prison. Officers worked relentlessly to identify those convicted and bring them before the courts to face justice. And I hope Oliver's family are able to take some small comfort from the verdict. In a tribute to Mr Freckleton, his family said, while we accept today's verdict, nothing will ever bring Oliver back to his family and friends. He was taken from us in such a violent and cruel way. Whatever sentence is passed, it will never reflect our sense of loss or the constant heartfelt pain we will endure for the rest of our lives. So just want to say, rest in peace, Mr Freckleton, and my condolences go out to your family. But here's a couple of stories coming from the streets of the UK. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.